it's my pleasure and my honor to introduce a good friend of mine who's uh, spoken all across the globe, um, Alex Tarantiev. He's going to be talking on developing React templates using uh, the SharePoint Framework Library components. And with that, I will let you take it away, Alex, and I'll put myself on mute and go away for a little bit. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. So yeah, my name is Alex Terentiev and welcome to the session developing React templates using SharePoint Framework Library components. And uh, before we start, uh, mark your calendars for the next year, March 23rd to 25th, we will have uh, Microsoft 365 Collaboration Conference, previously known as SharePoint Conference, again in Las Vegas, Nevada, so probably uh, we'll be in a good sh shape for that time, and uh, yeah, maybe see you there. So uh, I also want to thank to all our generous sponsors because they're doing these uh, kind of events uh, possible. And uh, don't forget about the uh, raffle. Submit your answers to win one of three Oculus Quest all-in-one. And also uh, consider donating to the following COVID-19 relief funds, United Way and uh, International Medical Corps, and 10% of funds from sponsors go to support community relief as well. A few words about myself. I'm an Office Development MVP, Custom Solutions Architect and Lead Developer in SharePoint Alist. I have more than 10 years of experience with the SharePoint and extensive experience in front-end development. Currently, I am a Microsoft 365 PNP team member, and I have been three times awarded during SharePoint Dev Kitchen Awards by a SharePoint Dev team. It's kind of hackathons. But more important, of course, is social media. So follow me on Twitter, read my blog, visit my GitHub profile, and feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Few words about the company I'm working for. It's called SharePoint Alist. Uh, we are a services and products company. We are speci specializing on Microsoft 365 ecosystem, and uh, we do custom development, automations, uh, migrations, intranets, and so on and so forth. And also check out our uh, one of our products, uh, Navigator for Teams and SharePoint, that allows you to aggregate data across SharePoint, Teams, OneDrive, and display it using uh, rich grouping, filtering, and uh, layout capabilities. And now let's start uh, with the session and today's agenda. First of all, we'll go through SharePoint Framework Overview. The next one will overview SharePoint Framework Library Components. Then we will talk about React Basics. And the last one, of course, we'll be talking about React Templates using Library Components. So let's start with the SharePoint Framework Overview. So what is SharePoint Framework? The SharePoint Framework is a modern way to develop SharePoint customizations. It's client-side, it's modern, it's mobile-first, it's framework agnostic, meaning that you can use any JavaScript or TypeScript framework you like. It's based on commonly used uh, web development tools, and it can be kind of headache for classic SharePoint developers because we are not in a .NET world anymore. We are in a front-end world. But uh, this actually allows us to bring the latest and greatest from front-end world into SharePoint, and it was actually well overdue. And uh, one more thing I want to uh, mention about the SharePoint framework is that first-party SharePoint components are developed using SharePoint framework as well, and it makes SharePoint framework kind of unique development platform because uh, first-party developers and third-party developers are, are in the same boat. And uh, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, development tool chain. As I said, we are not in a .NET world, we are in a front-end world, uh, but all the tools that we have for development are pretty similar to what we had in .NET. So, for example, Node.js, it's a hosting and serving environment for uh, JavaScript projects, and it's pretty similar to IS Express and .NET. NPM is a package manager that allows you to reference uh, external libraries or external modules in your project, and it's pretty similar to NuGet package manager. Webpack is a modules transformer, bundler, and packager. It kind of uh, collects all your TypeScript files, CSS files, compiles them, uh, create chunks that later on will be loaded to the page. 
Gulp is an extendable task runner. It allows you to create custom uh, tasks and build different routines based on the, these tasks. So for example, SharePoint Framework build routine is based on Gulp tasks, and we can actually create custom tasks and inject them in SPFX build routine as well. So if you look at the uh, Webpack and uh, Gulp, together they're pretty similar to MS build in .NET. Yeoman is a templates engine with the generator second system, and you can think of generator as a um, uh, conditional template. So when you launch a generator, it uh, prompts a user with different questions and based on the answers, it will create the needed template for you. And it's pretty similar to Visual Studio templates. And the last one is a TypeScript. TypeScript is a language you will be using for uh, development and it's type superset of JavaScript that's pretty similar to uh, C Sharp because it's, uh, if you are familiar with JavaScript, it doesn't have like classes, interfaces, all this stuff, but TypeScript actually has. So basically it's much, much more easier to implement uh, your solutions using TypeScript rather than JavaScript. And uh, as you can see, there are a lot of new tools. And if you are a brand new uh, SharePoint Framework developer, you can have a question like, wow, what should I learn first and what should I think of? So uh, my recommendation would be, of course, you need to learn TypeScript because you will be using uh, this language on a day-to-day basis. And you need to know features of the language to be productive and to write performant code, right? Uh, the second thing I want to mention here is that NPM is pretty important. You don't need to know how NPM itself works, but you need to know what modules are available in there, what libraries are available in there. For example, if you need to work with uh, dates, you don't want to invent the wheel. You can you can just use Moment.js, for example, from NPM, uh, reference it in your project and use all the goodness it presents. All other tools, you just need to know a few commands and you'll be good to go. You'll be good to create your project, uh, to debug your project, to package your project and deploy it to SharePoint. So what's currently available in SharePoint framework? First of all, client-side web parts, and uh, the idea here is the same as in SP.NET web parts. Uh, web part is a component that can be added to the page and usually solves some business problem. A uh, good thing about client-side web parts or SharePoint framework web parts is that they can be added to both classic and modern pages, and they can be added in SharePoint 2016, 2019, and SharePoint Online. And also, they work in Microsoft Teams as tabs, and in Preview, they work as Outlook add-ins as well. So if you are thinking about developer developing new uh, web part for SharePoint, please use SharePoint Framework web parts. Next available thing is uh, extensions, and extensions allow you to extend or customize uh, modern SharePoint UI and modern SharePoint behavior. Currently, there are four extensions available. The first one is Application Customizer. It allows you to add a custom header and footer to the page, or you can inject custom JavaScript and CSS to the page using Application Customizer as well. The next one is Common Set Customizer. Common Set Customizer allows you to add custom buttons to list common bar and list items context menu. The next one is Field Customizer that allows you to provide custom rendering for uh, list columns. And the last one is Search Query Modifier that allows you to extend Search Query before it actually is sent to the server. So here in this screenshot, uh, user typed meeting to search for meeting. Before sending it to server, we translated it using uh, Azure to Spanish and Turkish, and we got results for all three languages instead of just English, which is pretty cool. Next available thing is library components, and we, of course, will talk more about library components during this session, but for now, you can think of library component like uh, shared code that can be uh, linked or used across any SharePoint framework solution in your tenant. Minimal path to awesome. So what steps you need to proceed with to create your SharePoint framework project? First of all, you need to install Node.js and NPM on your machine. And remark here, currently SharePoint framework supports Node.js version 8 and 10. 
Next step is to install some IDE where you will be developing your applications. And uh, there are no requirements, I would say, for IDE. It's, of course, good if uh, IDE supports uh, like syntax highlighting for CSS, for JavaScript, for TypeScript, and uh, IntelliSense, uh, some kind of IntelliSense. I prefer Visual Studio Code because, first of all, it's free. Uh, it was initially created for front-end development, and uh, most of the uh, examples, uh, demos around SharePoint framework uh, are demonstrated using uh, Visual Studio Code as well. So even if you prefer some other ID, it, it will be good for you to be at least familiar with uh, Visual Studio Code. Next step is to install uh, Yomon and Gulp to your machine, and this is done using NPM. I here in this command is a shortcut for install. Minus G parameter shows that we are installing modules globally and they will be available in uh, any folder in your machine. Yo is a shortcut for Yoman and Gulp is Gulp. So basically we are installing two modules. Next step is to install Yoman SharePoint generator in the same way as we installed Yo and Gulp. So again, we are using npm i minus g command and the name of the module for SharePoint generator is at Microsoft slash generator SharePoint. So when all the tools are installed to our machine, they are available, we can navigate to the folder where we want to create our solution and scaffold new project using SharePoint generator. It's done using yo command for yeoman and we are starting our generator using at Microsoft slash SharePoint. So as I mentioned, uh, Generator will prompt you with uh, multiple questions. So for example, uh, what is the name of your solution? Do you want to create a web part uh, extension or library component? Uh, do you want to use the React framework, uh, Knockout or plain TypeScript and so on and so forth? And when you answer all the questions, the Yeoman Generator will create a project for you. Uh, if you are creating the first ever uh, project on this specific machine, you also need to trust the uh, self-signed developer certificate. It will allow you to debug your SharePoint framework solutions locally using local server and local browsers. So this is done using gulp trust dev cert command. And the last step is to actually run the project with gulp serve command. It will uh, run a local server, start local server. It will launch default browser. And in the browser, it will open a so-called workbench page that allows you to add your custom web part in there and uh, debug it locally without even connection to SharePoint. So you can have some mock data in there. And in that case, you don't need to have a connection to SharePoint. So that's all I have for SharePoint Framework Overview. And uh, if there are any questions, I don't see any. OK, so I believe we can go further. Uh, and yeah, feel free to post uh, questions in the Q&A uh, section. I'll be trying to answer them. So let's dig into some details of SharePoint Framework Library Components. So library component is allows you to uh, have independently versioned and uh, hosted SPFX code. So uh, basically uh, it's kind of still SharePoint framework project. Because of that, you can have still separate versions for that and you can deploy it separately from anything else. Library components are hosted and served automatically for other SPFX components where they are referenced. And uh, we will talk a little bit more about uh, how you can reference the uh, library components, but still, if they're referenced in any other SPFX solution, they will be automatically popped out from or served from your app catalog. So you de deploy your library component to tenant app catalog, and after that, you can uh, link it in any other SharePoint framework solution. And uh, you can ask like, wait, we have CDN. Why do we need library components? And well, yes, that's true. You have CDN and library component is just an alternative option to have shared code. So it's up to you if you want to use that. Maybe you have some scenarios where CDN is better. Maybe you have some scenarios where uh, library components are better. 
And uh, there are some limitations for library components I want to uh, point here. Uh, first of all, uh, you can't host multiple different versions of the component at the same time. Uh, it's, uh, by the way, also applicable for any other SharePoint framework solution that is hosted on Office 365 CDN. So uh, you should keep it in mind when you uh, deliver new version of library component you must support previous versions code as well so you don't you you must not provide breaking changes because you can have uh, multiple web parts or multiple extensions shape and framework extensions that uh, use this library component and if you bring something break into this uh, library component all your web parts all extensions will be broken so uh, keep it in mind uh, the next one, uh, solution with library component cannot contain any other component type. So uh, you can mix and match web parts and extensions in one single solution. But if you want to create library component solution, you cannot add web parts or extensions in there. And uh, uh, library components are not supported when they are deployed to, ten, uh, to site collection app catalog. So basically you need uh, your solution, your library component solution, as well as web part solution will be using the library components, both installed to tenant level app catalog. Create, deploy, and use library component. So uh, the creation and process of library component uh, of deployment is uh, pretty similar to any other SPFX solution. First, we are uh, scaffolding our project using Yeoman Generator, and then uh, when uh, the uh, Yeoman asks us about what type of uh, client-side component do we want to create, we are selecting library. Next step is, of course, implement your custom logic. And uh, when it's done, we need to package our solution, upload the solution to a uh, tenant app catalog, and then uh, you can reference the component library either in a package.json or dynamically in the code using SP component uh, loader. So uh, in the demo later on in this session, I will show you how to work with SP component loader, but uh, yeah, keep in mind that you can just uh, open package.json file of your uh, SharePoint framework web part or uh, extension of solution and just uh, add the your library in dependencies uh, section of the package.json file. Now let's talk about React uh, basics. And uh, I want to provide some basic statements about React uh, that will help you to think in React way, which is really important when you start developing things in React because React is a little bit different from other uh, available libraries. For example, if you're familiar with uh, something like uh, Knockout or Vue.js, uh, these libraries are mostly based on uh, model view comp um, model view con controller uh, or model view view model uh, uh, templates, but in React case, it's not the same. So first of all, when you're building React apps, you're building encapsulated components. Components can be, of course, included one in another and uh, communicate with each other, but still, each component is kind of standalone entity. Next, React re-renders. It does not mutate. So it means that if something has changed, your component will be completely re-rendered. And uh, you can think like, wow, it should be pretty slow, but no, it's not slow. First of all, React effectively updates and renders uh, only needed components. And the second, it is based on fast virtual DOM. Uh, and probably when uh, you heard about uh, that somebody is talking about React, you heard about state and props, right? So state object is used uh, to uh, provide controls internal data or internal behavior. And uh, props are used to pass data uh, and events from parents to children. And a good simple example of uh, props and state is the drop-down component. And in drop-down component, items and uh, item selection handler are passed as props, and drop-down expanded collapse is just an internal state of your uh, drop-down. So how to implement a component? First, we need to reference React and React DOM in our project. 
Second, we use .jsx or .tsx files to implement the logic and markup. Uh, you can use uh, plain JavaScript or TypeScript files if you want, but JSX, TSX, it by the, by the way, JavaScript extended and TypeScript extended, they are more uh, convenient. Uh, and all the markup uh, that is rendered by your component should be returned from render method of your class. Next one, change in props and state lead to components re-render, and I already mentioned that. Uh, if you are using lowercase tags, uh, this will be interpreted as default HTML. So, for example, div, span, header, and so on and so forth. If you are using mixed case tags, these are custom components. Events in React are camel cased, not lowercase as in usual HTML. And instead of passing a name of the function, you should pass a whole function as an event handler. So let me actually show you the uh, simple React component and uh, how it behaves. So first, let me show you uh, my browser here. And it's pretty simple application where we have uh, like my first React app, so some text, and we have uh, a button here. If I click on the button, we have an alert with the number of clicks set to zero because we are in development mode, so zero is kind of one. If I click it again, uh, it will be incremented to be one and so on and so forth. So now I will show you the uh, code of that simple component. So let me make it a little bit bigger. So I have one, my component, custom component. The other one is app component. And inside app, I also use in like div, header, and my custom component. And actually, I want to, and by the way, yes, one more thing to uh, show you. In package.json uh, file, I have React and React DOM reference. So basically, this is mandatory to use uh, React in your solution. So let me go back to the uh, presentation. And here I have uh, the same code on this slide uh, that I just show you in the, uh, in the uh, Visual Studio code. And here we have all the principles we just discussed. So first of all, all the markup is uh, returned from a render method of the component. Next one, we can use lowercase tags for uh, default HTML uh, components like div and header in that case. We use mixed, ta uh, mixed case uh, tags for custom components. For the on-click event handler, we are using camel case like an on-click, and we are providing the whole function as a handler. And inside this handler, you can see that we are using both uh, props and state. So from props, we are getting text that was provided uh, by the uh, parent. And we also use in state that is kind of number of clicks. It's an internal state that we are changing every time when the button has been clicked. OK, uh, any questions now? Does SP, what is the good resource to learn TypeScript besides TypeScript.org site? So uh, from uh, free ones, I would say it's the best one from uh, the ones that you can pay for. Uh, check uh, Andrew Connell uh, course around TypeScript and SharePoint framework. Uh, it's not cheap, but it's really, 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 really good. So I would recommend that. Uh, the second one, does SPFX manifest version have any bearing on package.json? No. Unfortunately, you should provide. Uh, so first of all, manifest version of the web part uh, just displays the version of uh, JSON schema. So you have separate version in uh, package.json file and another version uh, in package uh, dash solution.json, which is kind of uh, configuration for packaging your SharePoint framework solution. And unfortunately, right now, they are not connected one to other. So you, you can uh, provide your custom gulp task, which is actually what I'm usually doing. So you're doing your custom gulp task that will uh, take the version from package.json file and apply the same version to package.json uh, package-solution.json in SPFX. In that case, they will be uh, 
like client. All right. Uh, so let's go to React templates and uh, React templates using library components. So first, let's identify the problem. So developers often need to create a UI, different UI uh, for different customers, uh, different surfaces, scenarios, behavior, behaviors, and so on and so forth. Uh, plain HTML and most of libraries like Handlebar.js uh, usually allow you to define static templates. Uh, you can pass data into these templates, but it can be tricky to handle events uh, from these templates, uh, implement some internal logic, uh, etc. And uh, there are some additional questions like uh, how can I use external event handlers with templates? How to inject these templates into React? How to load them using in my SPFX components? And how can I have the type checking if I'm using the uh, TypeScript? So the solution here is library components plus React or React plus library components. And I want to provide some uh, implementation details before we jump to the demo and write in some code. So first of all, as I mentioned, any mixed case tag is a custom component in React. So it means that we can define some uppercase uh, variable and uh, we can use it as a tag, which is really cool. React is also uh, providing us with the react.component class uh, interface. And this interface allows you to specify the uh, type of props uh, that will be passed to your React component, and because of that, you will have uh, you will have type checking inside your TypeScript. Library components are just SPFX projects with all the configurations available. So basically, you can reference React in there, which is important for React templates. Uh, you can use Office UI Fabric React support in there, or Fluent UI, sorry, in there. Uh, you can use uh, PNP reusable controls. So whatever you want. Um, Next one, SP component loader. So any library component is uh, still a component, SPFX component. So we, could, we can use SP component loader and especially load component by ID method to load our library dynamically to any SPFX solution. And if we know the contract or what is exported or exposed by the library component, we can use it in our solution. So basically, uh, we, we, we can just reference some properties from our library and we are good to go. And now let's actually switch to the codes. Before doing that, I want to just show you what uh, we will be creating. So I have a web part that has a list in it. And when we select some item in the list, we are displaying the uh, properties for this uh, uh, item underneath the list itself. So what I want to do, I want to allow user to provide a component ID for a custom library component that will render our list like that. So basically list is the same, but for details of the item or of the task, we are using Office UI Fabric panel in here. So let me jump to the code. And I believe it's uh, this one. Let me put it here. So in the code here in the solution, I have uh, actually two SharePoint framework projects. One is task details template, which is our library. And uh, let's go and see what it is right now, so it's just scaffolded by default. One difference with default scaffolding that I have here is that in our package.json, I have already referenced React, React DOM, and all the types as well as Office UI Fabric React. But anything else is just default. So right now we have some class in here with a single name, and that's all that is exported from our library component. The other project here is our tasks web part. And in this web part, currently I have two components, one task details, another tasks. So tasks is used to display a list and task details currently just display the uh, this not panel, but div underneath the uh, list. So what we will be doing first in our library component, we will implement custom React component that will render the same task details, 
but inside Office UI Fabric panel. And then in our uh, tasks web part, we will provide ability to reference this library component and select if we want to render our details underneath the list or using a panel. Okay, so uh, let me go to my library component here and in this task details uh, folder, I will create components folder in components let, let's add task details. It's not important to, not, not required to add all this folder, but it's just a good practice to have this kind of structure. And uh, I will add task details the sex file, which will be our component. And I also want to have some uh, styles for the component. So let me add task details module as CSS. Okay, and mostly I will be copying the uh, code from existing task details that I have. So first of all, I will copy the whole uh, CSS from here. And I will change few things. So flex, flex direction, I want it to be row. It will be more uh, beautiful in panel. And the second one, instead of padding, I want to have margin because I want to have like actual uh, margins uh, between the panel itself and our content. So CSS is implemented. Now let's copy uh, some code from task details TSX in here. I will copy that. Uh, move it here. And one thing here, I don't have I task details props in the model because I don't have this model uh, class or model file in my uh, library component. So I will grab this I task and I task details props and also copy them to our file instead of this import. Okay. And what we also want to do, we don't want to just display the div. We want to display a panel from Office UI Fabric. So let me add import. I'll be importing panel component from Office UI Fabric lib panel. Okay. Oops. Let me go back. Where are you? Here we go. So let's save it. And now we can go here in our render method where we are providing our markup for the component. And if we have some task, instead of rendering just div, I will add panel in here. And uh, header text will be something like, uh, let's say task details. And I also want to show that our panel is open. Okay, and all this markup that I copied will be just children of my panel. Okay, so we have implemented our uh, React component, which was, which was pretty simple, especially as we can copy paste some uh, markup, some code. Now we should go to our task details library.ts file, which is kind of entry point to our library component. And instead of exporting this uh, task details library class, we will export task details details our component from components task details task details and one more thing to do for the library component we also have this index.ts method if you are familiar with the uh, front-end developer development usually index.ts is a kind of entry point to your whole solution so again here it's exporting the class that we just deleted so instead of task details library we will be exporting our task details component. So basically that's all I need to do to uh, deploy or oh, sorry to uh, implement React component in SPFX library component. And the next step is actually deployed to our app catalog. And I have already done that because uh, there are some uh, connectivity issues when I'm trying to uh, deploy everything. So I should have it right here. Let me check the uh, name in the manifest. Task details library and in the config uh, package solution, task details template, right? 
so this is will be the name of the solution. Let me check that it's actually here. Yes, here is our task details template component, so it is already deployed to uh, our tenant app catalog. It means that now we can implement our web part and we can reference this component, this library component in our web part. So let's go back to our code. I will close that. I will collapse that. And here is our web part. So first let's work with the web part itself to allow user to provide the uh, component ID that we will be loading. And then we will use SP component loader to actually load this component. So first we have our property pane configuration. Again, right now it's just by default. It, uh, it provides information about the description for web part. But instead of that, I want to have a component ID property in here and label will be uh, component ID. OK, now I can modify our web part and it will have component ID instead of the uh, description. And next we can use this component ID to actually load the component from uh, our tenant app catalog. For that I'll be using SP component loader, SP component loader uh, that you need to uh, import from Microsoft SP loader module. And uh, because user can change properties dynamically, like reactively, uh, it means that in our render method, we need to check component ID all the time when the web part is re rendered. And uh, SP component loader dot load component by ID is, by the way, asynchronous operation. It means that our render method should be asynchronous as well. And it is possible in SharePoint frameworks to do so. First, we need to overwrite the uh, render render is render async property which returns boolean and we should return true in that case sharepoint framework itself sharepoint framework core will understand that our render method is uh, asynchronous and it will wait until it's ended so now Let's change our render method. I will mark it with a async and it will return promise void instead of just void. And uh, to notify SharePoint framework that render has finished, we should call this render completed. OK, now inside this method, we can use SP component loader to load our component. But what if, for example, user did not provide component ID? In that case, we can use our test details from the same uh, web part, right? So let me reference it here. Import task details from, uh, I have it in components, task details, task details. Okay, and now in the render method, we will set our task details component by default to task details but if we have component id set in our properties we will load our library so we will do that using sp component loader load component by id and here we are providing this id from our properties this properties component ID. OK, and when our library is uh, loaded, if you remember, we exported from our library, we exported the only property in our index, task details. So what we can do here, we can say like, hey, our task details component is equal to leap task details. And we also can have uh, type checking in here and do react component class of type i task details props. Okay. So what's okay? Yeah, because we, we leap is currently unknown because I didn't provide the uh, type of it, so it will be of type any. 
Okay, and this one, I need to provide the type for my component as well. Okay, now when we loaded the component, we want to uh, use it in our uh, tasks component, which is basically the one that displays the task details as well when the item is selected. So I will modify the uh, props for this component to provide task details component property, which will be again react uh, component class I task details props. And I need to reference uh, react in here. So let me copy it like that. OK, now in the web part, we can provide our component in the creation of our tasks object. So task details component will be equal to our task details component. Cool. Now let's go to our tasks.tsx uh, component. And currently, if you look at it, we have our list. And if there is a selected index, we are rendering task details. And currently, task details is just imported from our default implementation. So I will comment this one. And inside render method, what I will do, I will create a variable. And as I said, if it's a mixed, tag, uh, mixed uh, case, we can use variable as a tag. So I will create task details variable. And I will do like that. This props task details component. And if you look here, we don't have any errors. Moreover, we are providing props to our components. So we have type checking. If I hover over this task, it has I task as a type for the property, right? So we have type checking in the TypeScript. We are using, we are dynamically loading our uh, component and it's a React component, which is really, really cool. Okay, so hopefully we don't have any errors and I will be able to launch the solution. So here is my console and I will do gulp serve no browser. Uh, gulp serve no browser will launch local server, but it will not uh, launch default browser because I want to test it on uh, my tenant in my SharePoint tenant because the library component is installed in the in the tenant. It's not local, right? So for that purposes, I'll use Workbench that is hosted inside SharePoint and you can reference it in any uh, site, in any SharePoint site using layouts 15 workbench.spx. So let me refresh it and we should have our tasks web part in here. So by default, default behavior, we have list, we have details underneath the list. So let me click on our properties for the web part. As you can see, we have this component ID and right now it's empty. So in our code, if we navigate to our library component and if we navigate to our manifest of the library component, we see the ID in there. And basically, this is the, the ID of our component. This is the ID we can use. So let me go back and hopefully it works. Yay, it works. So as you can see, right after I added a component ID to the property pane, we see the details in the uh, panel instead of underneath the list. So again, if I want to remove it, I remove it and we see the details again as it was in out of the box implementation. So it's pretty dynamic. You can create multiple different UIs, uh, multiple different behaviors. You can use these behaviors dynamically using SP component loader. You can load them uh, at any time you want uh, or even provide the uh, some UI to your users to do that, to make the selection. And I mean, not like end users, but probably power users, the ones that are uh, editing the pages. So. Pretty cool, right? And we have type check and we have everything we expect to have in the SharePoint framework solutions. So let me jump back to the presentation. 
And uh, the last thing I want to uh, point here are the resources. And the resources are across SharePoint framework, across uh, React, and especially library components. So first link is SPFX overview, so it's general SharePoint framework overview. The next one is SharePoint framework dev tutorials, where you can find uh, tutorials how to develop this or that, and uh, library component tutorial is part of that as well. And you can also see how to develop, like for example, uh, team steps using SPFX and so on and so forth. Uh, the next one is uh, React documentation to start with uh, React.js. The next one is uh, Microsoft 365 PNP community. And uh, if you are not familiar with the PNP, you must be familiar, especially a SharePoint developer, because it provides tons of helpful materials, reusable components, uh, reusable solutions, uh, videos, uh, blog posts, and so on and so forth. So it simplify, simplifies your life very, very, very well. And not only for developers, but for end users, for admins, and for everybody. Uh, the next one is a blog post about React templates using SPFX library components that I uh, wrote, and basically it's a little bit more uh, extensive than the current uh, session because I have only 15, 50 minutes to provide all the material here. Uh, the next two are demos or samples. The first one is exact demo from this session. So basically you can grab this code and use it. The next one is more complex sample of React templates where we are mixing and matching both list and task details as well. We can load both of them and as different templates, for example. Uh, the next one is a good uh, blog post uh, by Stefan Bauer on library components tips and tricks. And also David Warner, uh, the second blog post uh, with great posts around library components as well. And saying that, yes, and of course I will share the uh, presentation and the link to the code to the GitHub uh, on Twitter and uh, tag it with uh, M365VN hashtag. So that's all I had for today. Thank you for joining us. And if there are any questions, I will answer them right away. Thank you so much, Alex. I appreciate it. As, as uh, we have probably a minute or two for if there's any questions. Um, if not, please feel free to uh, go over to the community zone and I'm going to post the link to the community zone in the chat. Um, and feel free to go over there if there's uh, any uh, additional questions. Yep, yep, and feel free to connect with me on any social media I provide it as well. I, I usually I try to answer the questions there as well. Thank you so much, Alex. You have a great day. Hope you're doing well. Thank you, Rick. Have a great day, and everyone who attended, have a great day as well. Thank you.